The Crystal Desert was a desert in Scarith, located beyond the northwestern perimeter of the Endless Forest. Its northern edge was lined by the Claw Mountains, which were among the only natural source of shade in the area. Its sands never stopped shifting, and walking over them was likened to traversing water. It was frequently beset by sandstorms and lightning storms. Days were hot and nights unbearably cold. Any moisture landing on the ground would evaporate on contact with the ground during the day, thus late evening was the ideal time to gather water. The dunes were home to reedy plants which could easily be mistaken for rock formations during the day, but which bloomed at night, providing food to insects, birds and other desert fauna. Enormous winged creatures with cartilaginous bodies and flat heads, crystal skimmers are perfectly adapted for life in the harsh, hot, arid climate of the crystal desert. Although they have the largest wingspan of any creature on Thray, the fearless crystal skimmers do not often flap their wings, instead using them to effortlessly glide from place to place. They are constant companions of the Dawson and an important part of their culture and survival. The fiendish peeper beetles crave the soft jelly found in fresh eyeballs and will attack any prey, big or small, to get it. Standing on sharp, stick-thin legs, they are robust creatures with tough segmented bodies. Burrowing into soft, tilled soil, they lay in wait for unfortunate victims. Peepers tend to focus on smaller prey but will also attack gelfling farmers and other larger targets given the opportunity. Moogs were small fossorial animals that resembled a mixture of a hermit crab and a mole, and were about a foot and a half long at full maturity, with furry bodies covered in protective exoskeletal armor. They lived in burrows underneath rocks, but they often fed and foraged above ground, using their massive armored forelimbs to plow away shallow layers of substrate in the search for insects. Unlike most oviparous animals, they breastfed their offspring after they hatched. Moog bones were used as protection charms by the Dawson clan. Solobe are found in the crystal desert and are frequently referred to as slob. S by the Dawson because of their lackadaisical posture and gaping mouths. But this is a mischaracterization. When a solobe has its mouth agape, it is trying to catch a cool breeze, a means of modulating its internal temperature. Chen it lays motionless in the sun, a solobe is using the crystalline sail on its back to collect and refract sunlight into its body, gathering nutrients through a form of photosynthesis. Keratic were birds that were recognizable due to the dark fluffy feathers that covered sections of their bodies while leaving their legs and undersides exposed. During the day when the three suns were at their peak, Keratic could shift their bodies so that their feathers would protect their flesh from sunburn. In the cold of the night, they would cover their exposed sections with down and fluff their feathers into a configuration that would better hold in heat. They were naturally insectivores, but when their feeding grounds were decimated by violent sandstorms they would eat other animals and even their own kind. Few creatures of Thray have a name more apt than the armored bub, a mammal with a thick outer shell that bellows, bub, 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 as it sniffs around the arid climes of the crystal desert. One of the peeper beetle's few natural predators, the armored bub resorts to eating desert scrub if it cannot find meteor fare. Because peeper beetles present a serious threat to desert travelers, the armored bub is revered in Dawson culture for its role in keeping the eye-munching insects at bay. Ardiffs were crepuscular mammals that were characterized by their angular, lupine features, needle-sharp teeth and plumed tails. They were the dominant predators of the crystal desert during the Age of Innocence, and were a major threat to the primitive gelfling tribes, frequently breaking into their shelters and dragging them out. Ardiff predation was one of the driving forces behind the gelfling forming the rudiments of civilization and forging the first weapons. By the age of division, the Ardiffs had long been driven to extinction, but lingered in gelfling mythology. Deiduums were animals native to the crystal desert. They moved silently on six hoofed feet, which distributed their weight in such a way that they did not sink into deep dunes, and sported a row of dorsal scales which are EFL. Ected heat. These scales could range in color from translucent red to black. Their torsos were covered in downy white fur, and their jaws were filled with intimidating fangs. 
Despite this, Daedakayams were peaceful creatures which, while never domesticated, willingly carried travelers in the desert in exchange for a few spoonfuls of water. The Daedakayam were the sigil animals of the Dawson clan, though they were never domesticated by them. According to Dawson folklore, the Daedoim emerged from the footprints left by Ranip during his travels, and honored it by naming their rite of passage, Trial of the Daedoim, after the animal. Thria heard of the Daedoim from her Dawson hosts, but erroneously described them as being four-legged. The Swathal is a large mammal that roams the Crystal Desert. It has four legs, all with backward-facing knees, and a short prehensile snout that it uses to scent water. When it have the opportunity to hydrate, they drink more than their fill and store the rest in their hump. Swathal also produce milk. Many a weary gelfling lost in the desert owes its life to the creature's sweet glowing mill, a gift the placid animal gives freely. The Silver Sea is a cold ice-laden ocean that bordered the Scarith region to the north. This immeasurable sea forms the border of the known world, although islands are said to lurk just beyond the horizon. Its indigenous plant life was comparatively scarce, consisting largely of kelp, as such, most fruits and vegetables consumed by the Sifa were imported. Lock snakes were reptiles found in the mountains of Grot and the cliffs of the Safan coast. They were reputed to be among Thray's toughest creatures due to their nearly impenetrable hides. Born pink and soft, young lock snakes would ingest pebbles and rocks, which their digestive systems would break down and use the nutrients to reinforce the animal scales. These scales varied in color, depending on the mineral composition of the rocks they consumed. Adult lock snakes would continue to ingest minerals throughout their lives, though with the addition of animal prey. Their heads and tails worked together as a locking mechanism, with a unique skull structure that allowed them to insert their tails into their mouths and out the back of their heads like a buckle, locking their jaws closed and keeping the tail end secured. In nature, this ability was used for constricting prey. In captivity, this trait prompted the Skeksis to use lock snakes as living locks, wrapping their bodies around specially designed knobs on cabinet doors, vigilantly guarding the contents inside. Guffles were semi-aquatic mammals native to the estuaries of Sog and the Silver Sea. They were characterized by their whiskered snouts, black eyes and unusually loud emissions. In their natural habitat, they fed on fish and kept warm in freezing waters through an insulating layer of blubber. They are known for being hedonistic eaters with a propensity for breaking wind at ear-splitting volume. Apart from their poor table manners, they are extremely agreeable creatures with highly distinctive features, including shiny black eyes and chubby whisker-rimmed snouts. Shrumpen were plump, multi-tailed aquatic invertebrates known to travel in schools of millions along the Safan coast. They were one of the most in-demand delicacies at the Skeksis banquets, served alive and wriggling and slowly smothered to death in gravy. The Skeksis prized them so highly that the Sifa clan were expected to present enormous hauls of them during tithing ceremonies, which caused overfishing that almost drove the creatures to extinction. Massive shelled reptiles whose physiology incorporates flesh, scales and stones, adult turtle can hibernate for many trine, slowing down their metabolism to the point where they appear to be deceased. Turtles often awaken from their slumber to find entire ecosystems living on their backs, including trees, birds and animals. Often sighted swimming in the Silver Sea, they are able to hibernate while afloat, inevitably becoming floating islands that sustain pockets of life as they drift around Thray's shores. Dubabubs were creatures commonly found in the Silver Sea. Among the most graceful swimmers on Thray, they achieved this feat by growing up to 18 fins, which allowed them to paddle through water with perfect synchronicity. Dubabubs were social creatures that often traveled in large groups and would band together to ward off potential threats, leaving them with few natural predators. They were often seen frolicking in the surf along the Safan coast, with sightings further out to sea being considered auspicious omens by sailors from the Sifa clan. Tendrils were creatures native to the endless forest, the hills along the Safan. They tended to lie motionless for hours waiting for an insect or small mammal to pass and would then attack with their neurotoxic feelers, with even the smallest grays paralyzing their prey and allowing them to consume it while it still lived. 
Entire colonies of tendrils would roll to new cliff faces like tumbleweeds when their food supply became scarce. Kapati were creatures recognizable by their orange fur, protruding fangs and large black eyes, they could often be found crawling along ridges and overhangs. They were known to raid unattended birds' nests, eat the eggs and then blend into the natural camouflage of the nest. Once the mother bird returned, the kapati would devour her too. Mullips were animals native to the southern coasts of Thray. They were arboreal creatures that would climb atop fruiting trees and retreat into their shells, which would blend in with the fruit. They would then lash out at any herbivores mistaking them for food, raking them with their claws, which contained a poison which liquefied flesh and organs. Once their prey succumbed, mullips would use their proboscis to suck up the remains. Three-eyed crutter were fast-growing barnacle-like creatures commonly found in the Silver Sea. Their bodies made up of hundreds of fine bristles called baleen, they would cling to docks and the underside of ships and feed on small plant and animal particles. Crutter were generally harmless, but were a nuisance for the Sifa clan due to their tendency to throw ships off course or even sink them when colonies would form on their underside. The gelfling would try to prevent these infestations by coating the undersides of ships with fermented nebri oil, which was the impermeable noxious residue left over from podling cooking. Brindlisk were large, nomadic, crimson-shelled beetles native to the Safan coast. They dug burrows in the sands and congregated at tide pools where they would feed on small water invertebrates. They were respected by the Sifa clan, due to being the first creatures they saw when approaching dry land. They therefore honored them by wearing good luck charms made from brindlisk shells. <laughs>